For the safety of your smile, use Pepsodent twice a day. See your dentist twice a year. <laughs> Lever Brothers Company presents the Pepsodent show, My Friend Irma, created by Cy Howard and starring Marie Wilson as Irma with Joan Banks as Jane. Friendship, friendship, just the perfect friendship when other friendships have been forgotten. such a kick out of when we were kids. You know, the ones that went like this. What has legs but can't walk? The answer was a table. What has eyes but can't see? Potatoes. What has a head but can't think? What do you think the answer is? A cabbage? Uh-uh. It's Irma Peterson. <laughs> now, don't get me wrong. I love the girl. It's just that sometimes she... did. Well, for instance, the other day I was reading some fashion notes and I said, Irma. Uh, yes, Jane? I can't understand it. Just when we begin to get used to the longer skirts, they start talking about making them shorter. I wish they'd make up their minds. So do I. My legs are getting dizzy. <laughs> See what I mean? Well, maybe these remarks of Irma's jar me so much because twice a day I go through an ordeal that only a New York working girl can understand. It's that subway ride from home to work and from work back home every day during the rush hours. A little jamboree in which five million people cram themselves into little boxcars and play a game called See Who Gets Out Alive. <laughs> Today, I didn't quite make it. Irma, do we have any mercurochrome or iodine? Uh, no, Jane, all we have is root beer and Coca-Cola. <laughs> Please, Irma, all I ask is a little mercy. I've been wounded. Some big lug on the subway thought my ankle was a bar rail and tried to climb up it. <laughs> it's just terrible, Jane, the way those people shove and push and squirm on the subways. I guess that's what they mean by the underground movement. <laughs> no, Irma, that is something else. Gee, I, I wish there was some other way we could get to work. Well, maybe the bus would be better. No, Jane, I took a bus last week, and they're terrible. What do you mean? Well, when you get on, there's a little sign that says, please do not speak to the driver. So I had to ride to the end of the line because I couldn't tell him where I wanted to get off. <laughs> Irma, that sign means... Oh, come in. Hello, Jane. Irma. Oh, Richard. Saturday afternoon and you're not playing golf? I'm on my way to the club now. But I just remembered you brought the files home with you on the Chelsea Corporation. Uh, did you finish them? Yes, last night. Well, the auditors are coming this afternoon and they'll pick them up at the club. I thought I'd save you a trip back to the office. Oh, Richard, how sweet of you. Matter of fact, I'm not in much condition to travel. Take a look at my ankle. Hmm. Looks pretty good to me. You're looking at the wrong one. Oh, that one. Well, what happened? Oh, you wouldn't understand, Richard, but believe me, some of the things that happen to us girls on the subway are enough to frighten the men out of their seats. <laughs> Gee, I wish we didn't have to take that subway. Say, Jane, I think I know something that might interest you. A friend of mine's leaving for the Orient right away, and he wants to dispose of his car at a very low price. Why don't you and Irma buy it? Buy a car? But... Uh... It's a wonderful value. A 47 Nash with a lot of extras for only $1,100. It also has a built-in bed. Well, we need a car, but I don't think that one is practical. What do you mean? Suppose we're driving along and we oversleep. We're liable to... <laughs> liable to pass our stop and be late for work. <laughs> Never mind, Irma. Oh, thanks anyway, Richard, but I I'm afraid that's more than we can afford. Well, Jane, I'll be glad to help you finance it. You think it over and let me know as soon as you can. I have to run along now, but uh, you can reach me at home. Goodbye. Bye, Richard. 
gosh, Jane, I wish we did have a car. We could go out and picnics and we can take Al and Richard. Mm, that, that would be nice, sweetie, but I'm afraid it'd be too expensive for our pocketbook. But if we took Al and Richard, they'd share the expenses. Yes, I know. Richard would buy the gas and Al would furnish the hot air for the tires. <laughs> Anyway, honey, that's not what I mean. You see, we only have $380 in the cookie jar, our total savings. I think we should save it for something, something more important. Uh, come in. It's only me, Professor Krafatsky. <laughs> Hello, Janie and Emma. Girls, quick, I got to get some newspapers and scotch tape because Mrs. O'Reilly is mad at me and I got to cover the mirrors in her room. Well, why cover the mirrors? She told me if she were a man, she would punch me in the nose. And if she doesn't get a chance to look in the mirror, maybe she'll go right down thinking she's a woman. <laughs> oh, Professor, stop making up stories. Oh, no, no, she's really angry at me. She says I insulted her. Insulted her? Yes, last night we went to see... A Tale of Two Cities. And when Marie Antoinette got her head cut off, Mrs. O'Reilly began to cry. And I just happened to mention that I thought the same operation would improve her appearance. <laughs> Didn't know she was so touchy. <laughs> Tell me, girls, what's new? Oh, we have, a, we have a chance to buy a car, but Jane doesn't think we can afford it. Well, personally, girls, I think it's a very good idea. Young people should have a car. But when you're old like me, you don't like to run around with your girlfriend. It's easier just to sit home on the sofa. And at my age, you don't want a traffic signal to tell you when to stop and when to go. Come in. Hello, girls. Hello, Miss O'Reilly. Don't you hello me, you uh, cut-rate Casanova. Now, please, the two of you. Can't you ever say a civil word to each other while, without ending up in a, a collision? Oh, a collision? Jane, why can't we get the car? Oh, no, not that again. <laughs> Are you girls planning on buying a car? Oh, well, Richard has a friend who wants to sell us one at a bargain price, but Jane is stubborn. I guess she'd rather walk, you know, be what they call a pediatrician. <laughs> Pedestrian. Girls, you ought to get a car. It's such fun. Oh, I remember when I was a girl, my boyfriend Clancy had a roadster with a rumble seat. And we used to take long rides in the country. Oh, how I miss that car. Don't feel too bad, Miss O'Reilly. You still got the rumble seat. <laughs> the two of you. Let's, let's stop the quarreling, huh? Well, yes, you're not setting a very good example. You don't see Jane and I fighting, even though she's being mean and stubborn and won't buy a car. Oh, no. Irma, I'm going to settle this once and for all. Well, what are you going to do? I'm calling Richard. Uh, well, if you'll excuse me, I got to go brush the crumbs out of my bed. Oh. <laughs> Did you eat in bed last night? No, this morning. The bed is also my breakfast nook. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. Hello, Richard? Oh, no, I, I decided it's out of the question. Well, yes, I I'd love to have a car, but we just can't afford it. I, I knew you'd understand. What? Tonight? Well, maybe. I I'll call you later. Goodbye. There. Now, maybe we can forget about the car. Uh, Janie, would you mind coming downstairs and help me, helping me lower the hem on the dress I bought last year? That crazy professor doesn't like my legs to show. <laughs> he says they look like I'm walking on two pogo sticks. <laughs> Why, of course, Mrs. O'Reilly. I'll be right back, Irma. Goodbye, Irma, darling. Come in. Hiya, chicken. Hello, Al, honey. Hey, what's wrong with Jane? Just passed her in the hall and she was limping. Oh, yeah, someone stepped on her in the subway. Uh. Had the same thing happen to me once when I was halfway under the turnstile. <laughs> Them guards have shoes like policemen. Hey, what's wrong with you, chicken? You look as sad as a school teacher on payday. Uh, well, we have a chance to buy a car, but Jane turned it down cold. 
You think that's right, Al? Well, the Chinese have an old saying. It is later than you think. What time is it, Al? <laughs> no, Chicken, this, this is an old saying that means get what you can when you can so you will enjoy life. Of course, we'll admit a number of my friends get life and they don't enjoy it. <laughs> well, I think Jane and I should enjoy life. And if she doesn't have the courage, I think it's up to me. Oh, Chicken, if Jane says don't do nothing, don't do nothing. Oh, but I feel so miserable about it. In that case, Chicken, there's only one thing to do. How about a nice long walk in the fresh air? All right, Al. How about the park? Good. Wake me up when you get back. I'll be right here on the sofa. <laughs> oh, you're just as bad as Jane. Neither one of you has any confidence in me. Goodbye. <laughs> Al, wake up. Just a minute, officer. This is a public park, and this bank... Al! Oh. <laughs> Jane, must have dozed off. Sorry to break in on you during your working hours like this. But where is Irma? Oh, she went out to cool off. That business about you not buying a car seems to upset her. Oh, for heaven's sakes, if she's still on that kick, she ought to know we don't have any $1,100 to spend on a car. Well, you don't have to spend that kind of dough, Jane. A smart shopper can find all kinds of bargains if they know where to look. You mean those jip joints like Dirt Cheap Dugan's, the used car king? Dirt Cheap Dugan? That joint? Of course not, Jane. Only a moron would go to a place like that. Hello, Jane and Al, honey. Irma, where have you been? I just bought us a car at Dirt Cheap Dugan's. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Don't think that you are safe from film. Run the tip of your tongue over your teeth. If you feel a slippery coating, you have film, and you need Pepsodent with Irium to remove it. For film is worse than you think. Film collects stains that make your teeth look dull. But remember, Pepsodent toothpaste removes film, makes your teeth look bright. Film harbors germs that cause unpleasing breath. True, but Pepsodent removes film, makes your breath fresh and clean. Film glues acid to your teeth. The very acid many dentists agree is the cause of tooth decay. That's right. But Pepsodent toothpaste removes film and the acids it contains. Film never lets up. It forms continually on your teeth. Yes, you have to fight film every day. So brush your teeth twice a day with Pepsodent toothpaste. Because no other toothpaste can duplicate Pepsodent's film-removing formula. No other toothpaste contains irium or Pepsodent's gentle polishing agent. So start now to fight film with Pepsodent, the toothpaste with an exclusive formula for removing film. Cheer up, sister, and you too, mister. Pepsodent. Pepsodent. The paste for you. $380, every cent we had saved, and bought a car from a man who is famous for giving the worst deals in town. I haven't seen the car yet, and frankly, I'm afraid to look. Irma explained that she bought the car to make me happy, and I am happy. I'm so happy, I'm practically delirious. Irma! Yes, Jane? Don't you know that Dirt Cheap Dugan has the worst reputation in town? That's not true, Jane. I investigated him before I bought the car. And the person I spoke to recommended him very highly and said he was upright, fair, and honest. And who was this person you spoke to? His mother. <laughs> Irma, where is the car now? Right downstairs in front of the house. Come on, Jane. Let's go down and look at it, huh? All right, just let me, let me get a handful of aspirin. There. I'm ready. Come on. Well, there it stands. And here I stand. But only because I'm frantically bracing myself by holding on to the lamppost. 
I have seen pictures of the ruins of Pompeii, the Chicago fire, the wreck of the Hesperus, but right now I am facing the disaster that topped them all. I have never owned a car before, but I've seen a lot of them, and I was always under the impression that the headlight should be placed in such a way as to light up the road ahead. <laughs> These are arranged so they light up each other. <laughs> And then there's another thing that puzzles me. Irma. Yes, Jane? What is this wooden pole sticking up from the floorboards? Well, you see, Jane, it's a convertible. Uh, there's a beach umbrella in the back seat that fits on the pole. <laughs> How do you like it, Jane? Oh, Irma, it's stunning. <sighs> How soon can you return it and get our money back? Return it? Why? Why? Well, in the first place, honey, how could you be fool enough to buy a car without a hood on the motor? The man says it's an airflow engine and we shouldn't block the circulation. <laughs> Believe me, Jane, this is a good car. It, it, it has a Lincoln body. I can see it's a Lincoln because pieces of his beard are sticking through the upholstery. <laughs> oh, well, we can always have the seats recovered, but the car has a lot of improvements. Look at that new windshield wiper. It must be pretty strong because it's wiped away the whole windshield. <laughs> oh, Irma, before I have a stroke, take this car back and get our money. Oh, but, Jane, you said you were tired of the subway, and oh, I saw so that... that's what started it. Now, listen to me, Irma Peterson. We worked hard to save that $380, and I'm not going to stand by and see it wasted on a car like this. Why, th th this thing must bring back the horse. Oh, here comes Al. He knows all about cars. Now, Jane, you'll see how wrong you are. Hello, Jane. Hiya, chicken. Hey, what's the idea of Mrs. O'Reilly putting the rubbish cans out on Saturday? <laughs> Those aren't rubbish cans. That's the car I bought. You're kidding. <laughs> no, she isn't. Oh, Al, what can I do? Chicken, how could you ever buy a pile of junk like this? Well, please don't think I'm stupid. I got a written service guarantee. A service guarantee? Read it. Uh, we guarantee you'll be doing us a service if you don't tell your friends where you bought this car. <laughs> it figures, Irma, you have been swindled. And I think there's only one way to get action on this. We are going down to the Department of Motor Vehicles. Oh. All right, Jane, it's half your money, and if you think you've spent it foolishly, I guess it's the only thing to do. Well, hop in, everybody. I'll take the wheel. And I'll take the seat next to Al. And I'll take a cab. <laughs> Come on, Jane, there must be something to this car. Maybe it has a motor. Hang on, everybody, here we go. said that all the cylinders are hitting. Hitting? They sound like they're beating each other to death. <laughs> Never heard such weird sounds coming out of a car. Well, Mr. Dugan explained that, too. He says if you put some underseal on the car, it'll stop the noise. This car shouldn't be sealed under. It should be buried under. <laughs> oh! oh what, what, what was that terrific bump? Just ran over a wet cigarette. <laughs> car must have weak spring. Well, Mr. Dugan said... Oh, shut up. Well, here we are at the Bureau of Motor Vehicles. All out. All out. We've been pushing it for the last two blocks. <laughs> now, look, Irma, when we get inside, you tell the man in the motor vehicle department that you want immediate action. But, but I don't know what to say, Jane. Well, just, uh, just tell him that... You think it's about time something is done to protect girls like you from swindlers like Dirt Cheap Dugan, and, and that it's up to the city to press charges. Now, is that clear? I think so, Jane. Let's see. Uh, uh, I think it's about time press charges against girls like me, <laughs> and it's up to the city to do it dirt cheap. Oh, hold it! <laughs> Better let me do the talking. Come on, let's go in. Uh, how do you do? Can I help you? Friend, this here young lady bought a used car from Dirt Cheap Dugan for $380. Uh, 
and to coin a phrase, my chicken has been plucked. <laughs> well, um, as soon as you mention dirt cheap Dugan, I understand the situation. But unfortunately, it doesn't come under our jurisdiction. Sorry. Oh, well, come on, kids. Now what? Maybe I can do something. You've done enough for one day. Just go on home, Irma, and stay there. Don't buy anything. Don't look at anything. Just sit there until I come back. Well, where are you going, Jane? I'm going to stop by and talk to Richard. Maybe he can tell me a way to get our money back. Okay, Jane. Come on, chicken. I'll drive you back to the house. All right, Al. Uh, but this time, will you drive backwards? I think some things fell off the car on the way down here, and I want to look for them. <laughs> well, Mr. Rhinelander, I'm certainly glad you brought Miss Stacy in. We here at the Allied Automobile Club have been swamped with complaints, and we've been looking all over for the right kind of evidence. And from the description of your car, Miss Stacy, I'm sure it's just what we need to win our case. Fine. Now what? I'll give you a check for the full amount you spent, Miss Stacy, and our man will pick up the car right away. Oh, that's wonderful. Thanks ever so much, Mr. Johnson. <laughs> Gee, Al, I didn't realize our car was in such bad condition till you flicked your cigar ashes on the fender and the fender fell off. <laughs> you might as well know the rest of it, chicken. Remember that time I had to stop for the red light in a hurry and jam my foot on the brake? Yes, I remember the car stopped. That was only because my foot went through the floorboards <laughs> and my heel scraped the pavement. <laughs> Chicken, let's face it, we gotta get rid of that car. It's got a cough in the motor even a four-way cold tablet wouldn't fix. Uh, what about Jane? She's seeing Richard. Yeah, Richard never gets things done. Got to do it ourselves. And in a case like this, there's only one man to call. Who else? Who else but... Hello, Joe. <laughs> ah, got a problem. Have a car, got to get our money out of it. What is the quickest method? Huh? File the serial numbers off the engine, give it a fast paint job, and just make sure not to sell it to a cop? <laughs> no, no, Joe, this car ain't hot. Besides, there's nothing to hold it together while you spray the paint on. <laughs> yeah, Joe, it's a wreck. What else do you suggest? Uh-huh. 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 Mm-hmm. Thanks, Joe, and goodbye, noble friend. Chicken, Joe has got a touch of genius. We're all set. Oh, wonderful, Al. What do we do? Raffle off the car by selling tickets around the neighborhood at a buck a throw. Oh. <laughs> well, I is this honest? We well, certainly, Chicken. No matter how you look at it, this car is worth a buck. <laughs> and besides, uh, a lot of people are joining pyramid clubs, and this will teach them not to gamble. <laughs> to get our money back so Jane will be happy. First thing we do is make out the raffle tickets. Uh, where's the pencil? Uh, here you are, Al. Yeah. Now, what to say on them? Let's see. Ah, raffle. Do you like to take rides in the country? Or are you the kind of a person who enjoys looking at old relics in the museum? Or perhaps you crave excitement like riding a buck and bronco? Here is your chance to have all three for one dollar. <laughs> Drawn to be held tonight. You like it, Chicken? Oh, it sounds wonderful. Uh, I'll get some paper and we'll write out all the tickets. Right, Chicken. Then we make a list of all our enemies and pay them a friendly visit. Hi, kids. Oh, Jane, we have wonderful news well, for it you. It can wait. Uh, Irma, uh, Al, our worries are over. Thanks to Richard, the auto club is giving us our money back for the car. A man's coming right over to pick it up so they can use it as evidence. Isn't that wonderful? Why are you two staring at each other like that? Al, why did you suddenly turn pale? Eh, uh, I'm anemic. <laughs> and Irma, what about you? I do impersonations, too. <laughs> Look, you two, something's going on around here, and I want to know what it is. Now, out with it. Well, Jane, you see, we got panicky. So we sold 380 raffle tickets on your car so you would get your money back. Oh, Irma, Al, how could you do this? But well, the car doesn't belong to us anymore. We can go to jail. Uh-oh. People probably coming for the grand drawing. Oh, come in. Hello, Miss Stacy. Oh, uh, Mr. Johnson from the Allied Auto Club. Yes. I uh, suppose you've come after the car. No. No, you see, I'm afraid I'll have to ask you for that check we gave you. We just learned that dirt cheap Dugan has skipped the country. 
So naturally, we'll have to drop the case. I'm terribly sorry. Oh, I see. Well, uh, here's your check. Thank you. Goodbye. Well, hey, you see, Jane, the car is ours, we go through with the raffle, and we come out even. But, Al, is it fair to our friends to charge a dollar for a car like that? Oh, I guess it's all right. Oh, of course. They could probably sell it somewhere for a dollar. To whom? Well, to a railroad company. They can leave it by a crossing to warn people with a sign that says, Mr. Motorist, this could happen to you. <laughs> Don't think that you are safe from film. Nearly everyone has it. Just run your tongue over your teeth. If you feel a slippery coating, that's film. And you'd better get Pepsodent toothpaste to remove it. For film collects stains that make teeth look dull. It harbors germs that cause unpleasing breath. Film glues acid to your teeth. The very acid that many dentists agree is the cause of tooth decay. And remember, film never lets up. So brush your teeth twice a day with film-removing Pepsodent. No other toothpaste can duplicate Pepsodent's film-removing formula. Get Pepsodent with Irium today. Pepsodent toothpaste hides film on teeth and cleans breath too. Pepsodent toothpaste gives film on teeth the old skidoo. drawing, and guess who won that unreasonable facsimile of a car? Professor Kropotkin. <laughs> and Irma thought it was wonderful. Irma, why do you think it's wonderful? Well, the professor always says he lives in a junk pile. Now he can drive around in one. <laughs> and you know, if I ever go out of my mind, it's because it's been driven out of my head by my friend, Irma. <laughs> My Friend Irma is produced and directed by Cy Howard. Mark Levy writes the script with Stanley Adams and Roland McLean, and it is brought to you by Pepsodent Toothpaste with Irium, another fine product of Lieber Brothers Company. Marie Wilson is starred as Irma, with Joan Banks as Jane. The part of Al was played by John Brown. Hans Conried was heard as Professor Kropotkin, and Gloria Gordon as Mrs. O'Reilly. Music was under the direction of Glad Glusky. You're a careful driver, perhaps. But are you careful enough to allow for the carelessness of other drivers? For your own sake, keep your speed down to such a level that you will have complete control of your car in emergencies and know and obey traffic laws. This is Wendell Niles speaking. The R-I-S-K, brisk flavor. That's what you get in Lipton tea. Yes, brisk flavor that picks you up, brings you back alive in a hurry. Brisk flavor that comes from Lipton's very special blending of the finest orange pico and pico teas. Try it. You'll find that this brisk flavor of Lipton's leaves you refreshed and ready to go again. And you can enjoy it often. Because even wonderful tea like Lipton's costs less than any drink except water. Always ask for Lipton tea, the brisk tea, with that heartwarming Lipton lift. <laughs> Tune in one hour earlier next week and listen to the Lux Radio Theater, followed by the Pepsodent Show, My Friend Irma, both brought to you by Lieber Brothers Company. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>